Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I'm here with a review for the 1998 Godzilla. Um, <laughs> it was awful, but before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful to you. So, yeah, I'm annoyed right now uh, because I felt like I wasted my time. This movie was staggering, two hours, 20 minutes. And since I have a policy on this channel to never review a movie without finishing it, I had to sit through this one and it was very difficult. Uh, there was a lot of times I wanted to turn it off. It was just very, very bad. It, literally everything about it's wrong. So let's make this a quick one so that I can move on with my life. I decided I'm gonna watch another movie tonight because this one did not quench my thirst whatsoever. So I don't know what I'm gonna watch. I'll just pick something at random probably. But uh, yeah, so this movie is about Matthew Broderick. Uh, he's playing a paleontologist scientist character and he is recruited by the uh, US government to investigate um, a lizard beast that is uh, or about to terrorize New York and I think it does but in like just some military locations not the civilians yet and uh, the reason Godzilla exists is because uh, the French government were doing some mutation and radiation testing on some lizard eggs and they accidentally created Godzilla and then later we learned that uh, Godzilla reproduces asexually uh, and has laid like 200 plus eggs which are gonna hatch and take over New York City so yeah boy so positive section Jean Reno um, he's he's great in everything he does he does not salvage this movie but that's the one thing I can say about this movie is it somehow got Jean Reno and he's not disappointing so there you go negative section everything else uh, story is basically carbon copy Americanized version of the same story that we've heard like 20 plus times now I think uh, the film is extremely uh, derivative of Jurassic Park uh, the fact that the film is just so the, the poster, the official poster for this movie is a foot, okay? And you're going to see that in this thumbnail as well, it's a foot. And that was hilariously accurate because this movie is basically a foot simulator. Not a foot fetish simulator, thankfully, but just a foot simulator. And the reason I call it that is because Godzilla in scale, uh, the, movie, the movie refuses to do wide shots and stuff. So we're just staring at his feet or his prints on the ground or scratches on the wall he makes all the time. When we do actually get to see Godzilla itself, it's this hideous looking CGI, blatant green screen, and we have all these characters with their sappy ass tropey dialogue, and they're doing these like, like amateur kind of, like Matthew Broderick in particular, he's like doing these fake phony sort of uh, surprise emoji expressions, and it's just not working. The film has zero tension because of these green screens and the fact that nothing's real. Uh, so yeah, you barely ever, I mean the movie's titled Godzilla, but you don't really get to spend that much time with Godzilla itself because you're too busy looking at his feet, his toenails, and uh, whatever damage he left behind. So yeah, it's also the movie has the same problem that the modern uh, MonsterVerse films have where they have way too, much, too many human scenes, human characters and human scenes. So there's a lot of screen time devoted purely to the star here, Matthew Broderick, uh, and just his general day-to-day, -day, what's he thinking and feeling at all times. And it's like, this is a Godzilla movie. There, or there actually is no antagonist in this movie as well. Well, I guess, no, Godzilla's supposed to be the antagonist, right? But I always thought of Godzilla as the good guy, so I don't really see him as a bad guy. But Godzilla does not have another kaiju or a monster to go against in this. Instead, they go this horrible route where they copy Jurassic Park and they, they hatch a few hundred eggs and have these CGI little dinosaur things running around. So, yeah. Godzilla 1998 is personally one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I think the CGI... That's the thing with the CGI is because I don't think it looked good when it came out. It obviously doesn't hold up today, but I bet it looked terrible when it came out. I bet it was heavily criticized just the way it was when it came out. So, that what does that leave us with? That leaves us with annoying, unlikable uh, human characters, a really tropey, terrible love interest, and uh, yeah, just a painfully dull and uninteresting story, to be honest. So, Godzilla 1998 gets a 1 out of 10. It is now the 20th film I've ever given a 1 out of 10, and in my opinion, it does deserve that because there are no redeeming qualities, and it's essentially, 
it, like the modern movies, like the the brand new ones, like Godzilla, King of Monsters, and all that, which which I have seen but I haven't reviewed, but I'm going to. That's actually why I watched this at all, because I wanted to see. Hmm, do, should I go and see the old ones? The answer is no. You do not need to see the old ones to appreciate the new ones. That is for sure. So I'm gonna leave the old ones behind in the dust and just jump right into the modern ones because the modern ones have basically an identical storyboard to this. Um, and practically an identical protagonist as well. It's always a scientist who's just interested in animals. <clears throat> but the difference is that the modern... <clears throat> Sorry. The modern ones have decent action and fantastic visuals and way better soundtracks. So, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice now, but this movie was really, really bad. I'm giving it a 1 out of 10. Please do not watch it, and I really regret purchasing it.